Now, since row operations are reversible, as we learned way back at the beginning of this course, this lets us know that elementary matrices are also invertible. So again, each elementary matrix E is invertible. And the inverse of this elementary matrix E, which we will denote as matrix E to the minus 1, is an elementary matrix of the same type that transforms E back into the identity matrix. So in other words, if E is produced by a row operation on the identity matrix, then there must exist another row operation of the same type that changes E back into the identity matrix. So let's quickly illustrate this by considering an elementary matrix E. Now, since all elementary matrices are invertible, then another elementary matrix So then an elementary matrix defined as e to the negative 1 must exist such that the product of the inverse of the elementary matrix E multiplied by the elementary matrix E is equal to the identity matrix. Now furthermore, since these two matrices, E and the inverse of matrix E, correspond to reverse operations, so they correspond to those reverse row operations, this lets us know that the product of the elementary matrix E with the inverse of the elementary matrix E must also be equal to the identity matrix. So here is an illustration to help us understand the inverse of the elementary matrices. So we are given two elementary matrices, and we are asked to find the elementary matrix for their inverse. So starting with the first elementary matrix, E sub 1. So we have 1, 0, negative 7, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we want to ask ourselves, what row operation is this elementary matrix performing on the identity matrix? So looking at this elementary matrix E sub 1, we can see that it is multiplying the third row by negative 7 and adding it to the first row of the identity matrix. And so our job is to reverse this operation. So to reverse this operation, what do we need to do? we need to do the opposite. So we are going to take seven times the third row of the identity matrix and add this to the first row of the identity matrix to produce the new first row. So in other words, the inverse of the elementary matrix E sub one is the three by three matrix defined by one, zero, plus seven, zero, one, zero, 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 one. So it's the opposite of what the elementary matrix E sub 1 is doing. And this is our beautiful final answer. Now the second elementary matrix E sub 2 is defined by the 3 by 3 matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 3. And again, we want to ask ourselves what row operation is being performed on the identity matrix here. So Looking at this elementary matrix, we can see that it is scaling the third row by a factor of three. So our job is to reverse this operation. So to reverse this operation, what do we need to do? The opposite. So to reverse this operation, what we want to do is scale the third row of the identity matrix by a factor of one third to produce the new third row. So we'll define this as the inverse of the elementary matrix E sub two 
This is a three by three matrix. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, third. And this is our beautiful final answer. So a great way to make sure that you have the correct inverse for your elementary matrix is to check. So we will never get it wrong. We can always check, does the elementary matrix E sub two multiplied by the inverse of this elementary matrix, does this equal the three by three identity matrix in this case? And don't forget, since in general matrix multiplication is not commutative, we also want to check that the product of the inverse of the elementary matrix E sub 2 multiplied by the original elementary matrix E sub 2 is also equal to that 3 by 3 identity matrix.